in the case of uh, Cushing disease, when the outside study was read as normal, we're going to go something very careful um, uh, exploration, which is more, uh, we use dynamic study, of course, and then we use more thinkart. And we can also count on sometimes uh, uh, heavily weighted T2 weighted imaging or high resolution T2 weighted imaging. As you can see in sagittal view, um, the pituitary gland is pretty normal size and stalk is normal and doesn't nothing really um, extraordinary in this sagittal view and homogeneously enhancing. And if you look at the coronal pre-contrast imaging, also nothing really striking, you see the pituitary stalk is totally midline. And the, there are some suspicion of a, a right lateral aspect of the, the pituitary gland. There is some non-enhancing component seen here. And this is done by three Tesla scanner uh, with uh, um, sometimes we use a two millimeter slice thickness to see much smaller region. As you can see, this hypo-enhancing component is not micro, <coughs> micro uh, thing. So this is more than two millimeters. So, but the thing is, people don't suspect this as a pituitary region because it's so lateralized. Uh, they may think this may be a part of the artifact from the cavern and sinus. So those cases, you really have to have a, a, a precise anatomical uh, validation of looking at the different planes in these things. So the one thing we do is that this is an isometric uh, post-contrast volumetric study. This is a 0 0.9 millimeter isometric volume uh, sequence, which you can do the reconstruction uh, after this. The one thing uh, we have to be careful about is you can see the white arrow that inferior central portion of the pituitary gland have some hypo intense hypo enhancing focus, which is looks like almost looks like a first case. But if you pay attention to this picture, you see in this area has a pulsation artifact from the carotid ICA. I don't know if you can see. You see a little little line going through. Right, so this is this line is very commonplace to have an inferior aspect of the pituitary gland and passing through, and then this is a really mimicking uh, uh, sign of pituitary adenoma. So, the, and so if you have have this, a uh, couple of things we can do as a radiologist, you can flip the angle, <coughs> or you can do a saturate place a saturation band to avoid the carotid artery to flow to go up. So all these kind of things to be adjusted. And you can do the, um, this is a dynamic study. In this patient dynamic study, I just go through every uh, couple of minutes of dynamic scan, uh, showing again a little hypo-enhancing focus. But in terms of the, uh, the degree of dynamic is this portion of a little bit delayed dynamic phase, you can see the enhancement homogeneously on the other side in this portion on the right side is not enhancing. So it's not really helpful because I saw the, the target in, without doing a dynamic. And then this is the uh, sort of the summary slide of, you can see the lateral aspect. And then if you do a re reformat imaging of this, you can see the pituitary ground is from here to here. And then the mass is located here which is outside the cavernous sinus. And then mostly sort of exophytic location, but we believe this is in the pituitary gland. And this is just show you the inferior petrosal sinus sampling. And then important thing about the inferior petrosal sinus sampling is the anatomy of the inferior petrosal sinus. So here is a uh, interjugular vein and sigmoid sin transverse sinus. And you can have an uh, inferior uh, petrosal sinus coming from the, inf uh, the in internal jugular vein and going into the cavernous sinus. And then, so this is the corresponding, uh, the picture in uh, AP view. And then the tip of the catheter, it has to be a close enough. This is a cavernous sinus. It has to be very close enough. The, and this person's cavernous sinus uh, sampling, this uh, petrosal sinus sampling, went to very close to the cavernous sinus. So this is a technically very uh, reliable uh, catheter positioning. And not all people able to close enough. 
because first of all, the inferior petrosal sinus can be hypoplastic in many cases, and there are some um, the basilar uh, communications, etc. And then all these plexus can be formed in a more precocious way. So sometimes the venous sampling, um, you know, report going to be the same, but the location, tip of the location, may be down here. And then you can go advance higher than this. So if you have a tip of the catheter is in close enough and symmetrical locate positioning, this is a you know really relatively reliable uh, setting. So um, this is the sort of superposition of the tip of the catheter is like in this location here, the cavernous sinus, and then my suspected mass I saw it here. So um, you know, in this situation, you can have a really reliable, um, you know, data setting. And many cases, this venous sampling technique is suspected because of the anatomical variations and the tip of the positioning of the catheter, one going too high and the other is lower.